Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to answer a frequently asked question that I get all the time. But before I get to that, I have to mention that starting today, Perfect Keto is having their Memorial Day sale. This is one of their bigger sales. They have lots of sales. Some of them are bigger than others. So this is one of the big ones. It is one of the buy more, save more sales. And if you buy five or more items, you can get 40% off your whole order. So it's a pretty good deal. I stocked up on bars. My absolute favorite bar right now is the Keto Bar Peanut Butter Chocolate Chip. So good. Um, and then I also got a bunch of the Mallow Munch Bars for the kids and for my husband. They love those. MCT oil powder is amazing. I actually got a free gift with my order of a whole bottle of strawberry MCT oil powder, which is a really, a really great free gift. Uh, they don't have any bigger sales than this probably until Black Friday. So um, if you need something for the summer, now is the time. All right, now on to the big question. And that question is... What is your best bread recipe? Or what is your final bread recipe? Or which one of your bread recipes is the one I should make? I get asked this question in so many forms, and I've actually gotten it asked more recently because just a few days ago, Wes over at High Flute and Low Carb featured one of my recipes in his bread battle video, which was so cool to see. I loved watching that. So welcome to any of you new subscribers who came over from his recommendation. I appreciate you being here. And I thought I would use this video to kind of talk through my different egg white bread recipes and let you know which ones I think are best. Although one response I have to the question, which one is best, is why do I have to pick just one? Can't we have more than one that we like? Obviously, we don't go into a bakery and expect only one kind of thing on the shelf. There's all kinds of amazing recipes you can make with these different ingredients. We don't just need one. But I do recognize, especially after I went and looked at my egg bread playlist, there are 70 videos <laughs> in that playlist. 70 videos about egg white bread. Well, some of them are other things besides bread, but include egg whites and egg white powder. But anyways, that is a lot to sort through. So I understand some people's frustration of trying to sort through the different videos and find something that they should make. I also want to mention that I never put any recipes on my recipe blog unless I think they're worth making again. So sometimes I will do videos of experiments where things don't really work out. I don't put those recipes on my blog. So if you want a list of all of the recipes that I have created that I think are worth sharing with you and having you guys attempt in your own kitchen, you can find that on my recipe blog. As far as bread recipes, if you are just wanting a basic delicious bread recipe, I recommend my next level butter bread. And that is the one that I made using the frozen shredded butter. Using that technique just totally transformed the whole egg bread making experience or the egg bread eating experience. There's a little bit of yolk powder or whole egg powder, depending on what you choose, in there that gives like the nice bubbles to the bread. But then also the shreds of butter give some bigger bubbles to the bread. And then of course the butter soaks through so it's not as dry and it's not as choky as some other recipes, and it is just delicious. So if you're wanting something to start with, that's a great place to start. The recipe itself has a lot of ingredients like most egg white bread recipes do, and shredding the butter, freezing the butter, and then shredding it does take some time and some effort, but I would say it's totally worth it. Now there is another recipe that may top the next level butter bread as far as flavor goes, but the amount of extra work you have to go through to make it happen causes me not to recommend it as like your first recipe. This is one that was inspired by Keto Upgrade because she, as far as I know, was the first one to even think that it could be possible to allow yeast to actually cause the bread to rise. I totally assumed that if you left the bread dough to rise, that it would just deflate and be soup after an hour. 
but she proved that not to be true and it's actually an incredible technique with this bread and it gives even more of a yeasty flavor than just adding yeast for flavor. Letting it have that one hour proof time um, just enhances the flavor and really takes it to another level beyond the next level. <laughs> So I have a video, I think it's entitled, I Can't Believe This Worked, um, where I took my next level butter bread with the shredded frozen butter in it, and I let it rise for an hour at um, about 100 degrees, and then baked it after that, and it is delicious. Super, super good. So if you are looking for a challenge, and you know, you have some time to play in the kitchen, I highly recommend trying that recipe. The next recipe that I will throw in here for just a basic bread recipe is my butter powder bread. And that video was entitled, My Best Loaf Yet, because I was at that point getting lots of questions saying, what's the final recipe? What's the best recipe? And so at that point, this was my best recipe. And it is very similar to the recipe with the frozen shredded butter, but instead of frozen shredded butter, it uses butter powder. Before I had the light bulb moment about using the frozen shredded butter, I thought butter powder was a genius idea to get fat into the recipe. Because the problem with getting fat into an egg white bread recipe is that as soon as fat hits the egg whites, it can cause them to deflate. So if you just stir in a whole bunch of melted butter, you might just have, you know, a pancake batter rather than a batter that's going to actually make a loaf of bread. So I had been trying to find ways to get fat into the bread, but keeping it from deflating the batter, and I found that powdered fats worked really, really well. And so I experimented with butter powder, um, butter milk powder, the whole egg powder, the yolk powder, all different kinds of powdered fat, even an, an olive oil powder. Um, and they those all work really well for the bread, and you can get a really, really nice bread with that. And so I'm throwing this recipe in there because it might be a great option for those that want the bread to be a little bit lower fat. I was really excited about the frozen shredded butter recipe because it caused the bread to be very high fat. And a lot of people on a keto diet want their fat percentage to be a lot higher. And so for those people, this the frozen shredded butter is a great option. If you want your bread to be a little bit lower in fat, using the butter powder option is a really, really good one. It makes an incredible loaf. I absolutely love it. And if you have butter powder on hand, it's easier than shredding the frozen butter, so it makes it just a little bit simpler, which for some people, that's really important. So those are basic breads. If you just want a loaf of bread to slice and use as sandwiches or use as toast, yes, it does toast. That's another frequently asked question. Uh, it toasts really well. My only tip for it is it browns faster than regular bread. So you want to, if you're toasting it like in a pan on the stove, you want to have the heat turned down lower than you normally would with a regular slice of bread and just check it because it will brown fast. Same if you're putting it in a toaster, turn the toast level down um, so it doesn't burn too fast. So now moving on to buns. Another really, really popular recipe that I've had a few iterations of is the butter buns. Uh, I had my original butter bun recipe, which is still phenomenal. It had xanthan gum in it, and I discovered a little while after that that I was not doing well with xanthan gum, and I discovered that gelatin was a really great substitute for that. So I switched out the recipe and used gelatin instead of xanthan gum. So I did a recipe for Butter Buns 2.0, so if you want to do something with xanthan gum, you can do the original butter bun recipe. If you want to do something with gelatin instead of xanthan gum, you can do butter buns 2.0. And then I also did um, two more videos about the butter buns because I did one with the frozen shredded butter when I discovered that that was delicious. Those turned out really, really well. And then I also did a yeasted butter bun when I discovered that you can actually cause the bread to rise with yeast. And the yeasted butter buns, oh my gosh, so 
good. I need to make those again. I have not made them in a long time. So if you want like the simplest butter bun, I would do butter buns 2.0 that have butter powder in them and then they have butter brushed on them um, like halfway through cooking. Oh, they're so good. Do the original butter buns or the butter buns 2.0. If you wanna take that extra step of doing the frozen shredded butter, do the next level butter buns. And then if, again, if you have extra time in the kitchen and you really wanna experiment and get like the top notch, best flavor, most delicious butter buns, do the yeasted next level butter buns. So, so good. Then I wanna throw in a few honorable mentions or like specialty buns or breads that I've done uh, that I definitely recommend. Cause sometimes you want like the plain sandwich bread or the plain buns, but these ones have some like extra flavors and stuff and they are absolutely delicious and absolutely you should try them. The first one is the olive rosemary buns. I made these with the olive oil powder, olive oil powder plus acacia fiber, and then the moist olives in there and the fresh rosemary. They like melt in your mouth and this is the first recipe I did where I felt like when I was chewing it, it tasted doughy. Like doughy. Not like you're chewing up a sponge, not like memory foam, but like actual, my mouth is watering because it tastes so good. I need to make these again. Doughy. So good. If you like Kalamata olives and fresh herbs, you are going to love these buns. So good. Next ones I want to mention are the Hawaiian rolls. So Amy from The Angel's Journey, previously Carnivore the Angel, she made the most incredible Hawaiian sweet buns. Her original recipe is so delicious. Like the flavor is so phenomenal and so good. Um, when I tried to work on that recipe, the main thing I was trying to do was get the structure to be a little bit more like nice and round. Whenever I would make them and I'd see other people make them, they'd really flatten which they, they were still usable, they were still delicious. I just thought maybe I could work on the recipe and try to get, you know, a little bit more structure, more like round, higher buns. Um, and I think I achieved that. And so I have my own version of the Hawaiian rolls, but you won't go wrong trying Amy's recipe or my recipe. So I'll put both of those down in the description. They're so delicious. They're like sweet and the flavor is a lot different than the other breads. So you'd think with all of these ingredients being, like most of the ingredients being the same, there's very little variation in ingredients, but you can get like some really different flavors and textures going on. So you can really enjoy like different kinds of bread like you would get in a bakery. So highly recommend the Hawaiian rolls. I wanted to throw in here my coconut milk buns and I really was surprised by these. I was trying to find something besides butter powder to use that was dairy free. And so I started playing with coconut milk powder and you'd think it would be like a one-to-one, -one. like if you use a quarter cup of butter powder, you'd use a quarter cup of coconut milk powder. I found that not to be the case at all. The coconut milk powder was incredibly strong in its effect on the bread dough. And so I had to just add just the tiniest little amount, but the effect it had on the bread dough was so amazing. I called these fluffy coconut buns because they were so fluffy and so soft and just in their own way, delicious. So especially if you are dairy free and if you happen to have coconut milk powder around, uh, I highly, highly recommend the fluffy coconut milk buns. Okay, last one that I have to throw out here. I have not had a lot of success making sweet breads with the egg white bread. I know there are some recipes out there and I've tried a lot of them. I just don't care for a lot of them. And so it hasn't been a huge focus of mine to make a whole bunch of sweet breads, but one that actually worked out super, super well that I do really love are the caramel pull apart sticky buns. 
These ones, I mean, first of all, they were gorgeous, like just with the caramel, they just turned out beautiful. And they were fluffy and soft and like with the sticky caramel on the outside, so, so delicious. And these ones are made with Perfect Keto MCT oil powder. So all of my recipes have some kind of a fat added, either frozen shredded butter or some kind of a fat powder in them. And that really gives a good effect to the bread. That's what like takes away the memory foam aspect of the bread. And Perfect Keto's uh, MCT oil powder and collagen powder has that effect on the bread. So if you have like the cinnamon toast MCT oil powder or like salted caramel, I use salted caramel in the caramel sticky buns, um, you can use that as the fat powder in the bread and it makes them delicious. I will have all of these recipes that I've talked about in this video down in the description with little notes so you know which ones to pick. I will also mention here I have a video on how to get the egg white powder for the cheapest price at least that I have been able to find in my area. I will put that video here at the end so you can check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you again in the next one.